Hi guys, you're probably gonna hear some weed whacking sounds in the background of this video and just think of those as my father saying hello to you all. I have so many books to show you today. I just moved back home after living abroad for three out of the last four years and I love my Kindle. My Kindle's my buddy, but I'm so excited to have physical books back in my life. And as you're about to see, I kind of went crazy. These aren't even all the books that I got in July. These are just the ones that I bought for myself. Like, it's a sickness. Anyway. We're going to be going by categories, so I'm starting with classics slash modern classics, and then going to children's lit, contemporary literary fiction, plays, poetry, and a graphic novel. Let's do this. I had a classic novel that I was planning to show you, but it came in terrible condition after shipping, meaning I'm going to save that one for my next haul. So the first book for today is The Essential Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. I read some Emerson back in high school and just instantly felt a connection to his writing. Of all the transcendentalists, he was the one that I most enjoyed reading. This is about 800 pages, so I'm going to take this slowly, just dipping in and out for a while. Apologies that the lighting is changing so much. It looks like I'm filming this on like 12 different days. No. It's just a summer day here in Pennsylvania. Anyway, the next book is The Optimist's Daughter by Eudora Welty. I had to get this after the way that Molly de Montaigne talked about it on her channel. She loves it to pieces, thinks it's an incredibly underrated book. This is what it's about. Laura McKelvahand, a young woman, has left the South and returns years later to New Orleans, where her father is dying. After his death, she and her silly young stepmother go back still farther to the small Mississippi town where she grew up, and it's about rediscovering things about her past, herself, and her parents. That's not an especially original or gripping description, but I trust Molly that there's something special about the writing. Last for this category is Literature Class, Berkeley 1980 by Julio Cortazar, and this is translated from Spanish by Catherine Silver. I talked very recently on this channel about how much I love Cortazar. He was an Argentine writer who wrote mind-bending magical realism, and on the front here you can see anyone who doesn't read Cortazar is doomed. Pablo Neruda, okay? You don't have to just take my word for it, people. As you would guess from the title, these are a series of eight lectures on literature that Cortazar gave at UC Berkeley in 1980, and so they include students' questions and his responses to them, and it begins, I want you to know that I'm not a critic or theorist. Oh my god. I'm so excited about this. The next category is children's lit, and first I have a republished classic, Skating Shoes by Nell Stratfield. You know the scene in You've Got Mail where Meg Ryan's character is like, I'd start with ballet shoes, it's my favorite. Although skating shoes is completely wonderful, but it's out of print. It's not anymore. I love the shoes books. They're all about talent and confidence and jealousy and friendship and it's such a gift to have another one ahead of me. The next book I have is maybe the most beautiful one in this whole haul and that's The Wolf Wilder by Catherine Rundell. This Bloomsbury cover illustration was done by Gelrev on Biko and it is glorious and I'm thinking the contents are going to be similar because I read Rooftoppers by Rendell earlier this year and loved it. This is about a girl named Feo who lives in the Russian woods with her mother. They're both wolf wilders and then soldiers arrive because you know Russia. And the last children's book that I got is this wonderful edition of His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. So this is all three novels and in the US they're called The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife, and The Amber Spyglass. I read them when I was young but I don't have clear memories of them except for The Golden Compass. Although I do remember that I hated the ending. Like the, the third book and I just were like, Ugh. But I'm guessing there are a lot of um, really meaningful, significant things that my young self missed. I'm looking forward to trying to pick up on those now that my brain is supposedly better at reading. I'm going to be rereading these throughout the summer in anticipation of The Book of Dust, which is a companion book to this trilogy that's coming out this fall. Now we get to the bread and butter of my reading, contemporary literary fiction by women. I didn't plan for all six of these books to be by women. They just are. The first one is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This is a beast. I barely read any long books last year. I barely read anything over 400 pages. This year I've been reading things like Middlemarch and Barkskins and Robin Hop Epic Fantasy and just remembering how much I enjoy getting lost in a chunky book. So this won the Man Booker Prize in 2013. It takes place in the 19th century during New Zealand's gold rush, follows lots of different characters and stories, and it somehow involves the signs of the zodiac. Some say it's gorgeously written, some say it's completely overwritten. 
I'll report back when I read it for myself. Then we have The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker. This has been making the rounds on British booktube recently, started by Mercedes and Marcy's Bookish Musings, who just loved it. And this sounds so up my alley. It's about a bunch of sisters and their abusive father kills himself. And so all the children are sent to different homes. And this is told from the perspective of Ari, the youngest girl. And she apparently has a, a really whimsical way of perceiving the world. I'm gonna get to this one soon. Next is Hood by Emma Donahue. I haven't read any Donahue before, which is really weird. She's the author most famously of Room and The Wonder, but this is the one I wanted to start with. It's about um, two women in Ireland who have been secret partners for years, and then one of them dies while the other is teaching at their old convent school, and then these are a series of memories from the one who's still alive. If you haven't checked out the Anna and Eric book club run by Anna at Acacia Books and Eric from The Lonesome Reader, I'll leave the link to the announcement video for that down below. It's so exciting. I'm obsessed with them both. I love the sound of the books they're going to talk about. And one of the ones that they chose for July is Ninefold to Make a Paper Swan by Ruth Gilligan. This is about immigration and Jewish communities in Ireland. It sounds fantastic. Ugh, then we get the little slanty lines here. Good. Add some decoration to my outfit. Another writer that I've been planning to read for a long time is Louise Erdrich, so I picked up La Rose. Erdrich is an American Indian author, and this is how this one starts. Late summer in North Dakota, 1999, Landro Iron stalks a deer along the edge of the property bordering his own. He shoots with easy confidence, but only when he staggers closer does he realize he has killed his neighbor's son. And this is about Iron trading his own son, La Rose, for that family's son. Uh, I am hoping to love this and then dive into Erdrich's backlist. The last book from contemporary literary fiction is History of Wolves by Emily Fridland. This is a debut and it's about a teenage girl named Linda and about her relationships with a girl named Lily, with her new history teacher, and with a little boy that she starts babysitting. I'm getting um, really eerie vibes from the description, which is definitely a good thing. This is getting massive praise, so I needed to see what the fuss was about. And look at how sexy the naked hardback is. The next category is plays, and I have two to show you. The first is Sweat by Lynn Nottage, which won the Pulitzer Prize this year. And this has special interest for me because it takes place in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is a five minute drive from where I'm sitting. I was listening to the New Yorker podcast in the winter of this year and heard an interview with Nottage and was like, somebody wrote a play about Reading? Like, rundown, manufacturing, wasteland, Reading. But that's exactly what this is about, about people living in a factory city that's losing jobs and how race and class play into all their interactions. All right, I've opened the blinds. Let's see if that's any better. The other play is a modern classic called The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman, and it says, a serious and adult play about two women who run a school for girls. After a malicious youngster starts a rumor about the two women, the rumor soon turns to scandal. My friends have been recommending this to me for a while, and I just hope that the play itself is much better written than the description. Almost there, you guys. I also bought two poetry collections, the first of which is Beautiful Girls by Melissa Lee Horton. Jen Campbell recommended this in a video about mental health, which I'll link down below. The description says, This is not a book for the faint-hearted. The reader has been invited to a sleepover at the asylum, a night in which five-year-old girls drift alone through the wards and where heaven is a place between the sky and the planets reserved for those with personality disorders. Sounds perfect for me. The other collection is Another America by Barbara Kingsolver. This is a dual English-Spanish edition, and the Spanish translation was done by Rebecca Cartes. I have read almost all of Kingsolver's works, and I'm actually gonna do an author spotlight on her at the end of this year when I finish everything that she's written. This is her only poetry collection, and she's one of my favorite authors, so I can't wait to get to it. Lastly, I got a graphic novel, Fun Home, a family tragicomic by Alison Bechtel, who created the Bechtel test for movies. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to look it up. She is a writer and a cartoonist, and this is her graphic <laughs> this is her graphic memoir about uh, her strange relationship with her late father and I love me some wacky families. Wow, at this point, it's like I'm in prison. Anyway, those are all the books that I had for you today. I know that this is part of the course for a lot of channels. A lot of people haul this many books every month, but this is like crazily extravagant compared to my normal buying standards, but I don't really care. I'm so excited when I look at these books. They just make me dying to read. You'll be seeing them in my wrap-ups in the coming months because I don't want to buy a lot more at this point. I really want to read the ones that I have and appreciate them. So let me know what you think about these books, if you've read them, if you're interested in reading them, and I'll see you soon for a very late June wrap-up.
Bye guys. Thanks for watching.